In elder years, where once was not, no sand or seas nor calm waves, no earth below nor sky above, only the yawning void and grass nowhere. of Jotuns, the Rintusar, are his descendants, and they named him Aurgelmir. The other was named Audumla, a great cow whose milk sustained Ymir in the days before the world. The cow would lick the salty ice and from it rose a being named Buri, the ancestor of all gods. His son, Bor, wed the Jotun Bestla, daughter of Balthor, and had three sons. Their names were Odin, Vili, and Ve. The three brothers slew the giant Ymir, drowning the Jotuns in the rivers of blood that gushed forth. All died save two, Bergilmir, who was grandson of Ymir himself, and his wife. They hid in a chest and survived the onslaught becoming the ancestor of all Jotuns. Odin and his brothers took Ymir's corpse and fashioned the world from it. His flesh became the earth and his bones the mountains. His hair became all that grows and his skull was fashioned into the very sky 
his brains becoming the clouds. His eyes became sun and the moon. His blood became the waters of the ocean, and with his brow, the gods made an enclosure, sealing the world away from the outer chaos. The dwarves were fashioned by the maggots crawling in Ymir's dead body. Most of them remained in the tunnels they had dug and became great crafters of the metal and the rocks. Four were made to carry the sky, and from their names we have the directions north, east, south, and west. The world was finished, but empty. One day, as the three brothers walked along the shore, they saw two logs that had been washed up from the sea, one of ash, one of elm. The gods carved out beings in their own image, one man and one woman. They gave them speech and thought, and Odin blew the breath of life into them. The man they named Usk, and the woman Embla. And they are the ancestors of all men. So ends the tale of the creation of the world.